Hello, in this video, I'm showing you how to install and set up the Hive Thermostat Mini. Now this is a wireless thermostat and receiver unit. There's no internet hub, there's no Wi-Fi settings, there's no smartphone. It's just a thermostat to turn your heating on and off when your house gets to the correct temperature. Having said that, you can link this to the Hive Hub if you want to, or if you've already got the hub and a thermostat, you might want to use this to zone a separate area. So I'm going to explain the wiring to you and the different options, and that's especially useful if you're taking an old wireless thermostat out, because it's really important that you get the wiring correct. I'm going to show you a couple of stand options, and of course I'm going to show you the most important bit, which is how to link the wireless thermostat to the receiver unit. Because the instructions that come in the box, they are absolutely useless, they don't tell you anything and when I visited the website I found it really unclear of what I was supposed to be doing. Now if you're trying to install one of these and you can't get the two units to connect together and I know lots of you are because there's questions all over the internet about why the units won't connect and I've had that problem myself 20 minutes later it's still not connected and what I found I had to do was to reset the thermostat back to its factory settings and then they connected together absolutely fine. So I'm going to show you exactly how you go about pairing together and doing the reset and of course a whole lot more as well. And at the end of the video I'll show you how to operate the thermostat and use the menu. Now I have made a completely separate video on how to wire it into a combination boiler and how to wire it into a traditional system because wire it into those two different systems is completely different for both of them. You'll also find there's lots of links to other help videos and if you visit my website there's over a hundred videos to help you with your gas boiler and your central heating. And by watching some of those hopefully you make your boiler way more efficient and reduce your gas bill. Right now let's get on with installing this Hive thermostat. So here's the Hive thermostat mini box. The box is quite dull and uneventful. I think it's so you can just recycle this cardboard really easily. So let's take a look at what we get inside the box. We've got the receiver and the mini thermostat in two separate boxes. Let's take a look at the receiver first. It's wrapped in a plastic bag and that's it, just the receiver. Let's take a look inside the thermostat box. All that's in here is a thermostat and some really basic instructions. Now the instructions aren't much used for anything. You have some very basic safety instructions, so don't set it on fire or throw it down the stairs. And you've got some very simple operational ones. There's nothing about the installation in these instructions. I thought I'd just point out that you don't get any screws or wall plugs to fit the receiver unit to the wall or the thermostat to the wall. So let's take a quick look at the receiver unit. We've got a button just here so we can override the thermostat and bring our heating on if we need to. We've got a power light at the top there and there's two screws on the bottom there so we can remove it from the wiring plate. So I'm just going to undo these two screws and then show you the wiring plate. You don't need to remove them completely, just loosen them so they're below the receiver unit. Once the screws are undone, you just fold the thermostat away from the plate. It kind of hinges from the top there and just lifts off. And there we go. Now on the back of the receiver unit, there are some wiring instructions. They're very small and they're right down there in the bottom right hand corner. I can't understand why they've made this so small. You need like a magnifying glass to read them. And if you are struggling to read it, just take a photo with your phone and enlarge it. So let's take a quick look at the wiring plate. So on here, it tells us all the connections. We've got a live, we've got a neutral, and we've also got terminals one and three, which are the ones that we'll be using. And it's also an earth connection. So let's take a quick look at the receiver unit. We've got this protective film on the front there. We've got our mode button and our up and down temperature buttons. If we look on the back, there's a bracket to fix a thermostat to the wall. Now this just pulls off and sort of hinges from the top like that. And on the back of the thermostat, you can see there are four AAA batteries. And we've got this little tag in here. It's ready to be removed when we want to turn the unit on. If you don't want to fix the thermostat to the wall, you can use a stand and then you can move the thermostat around the house as is needed. Some of my older customers, they like to take the thermostat up to bed with them and then they can turn the heating on and off as and when they want to. So when they can turn it off when they go to bed and then turn it back on again when they get up in the morning. Now this is a stand that is made by Hive for the mini thermostat. It has a lovely chrome finish and it's got a nice feel to it. It's nice and heavy. It's got some rubber feet on the bottom, which definitely help it grip the side and stop it from sliding around. Then all we do is just screw the back plate to the stand. This is a well-designed stand. 
They've even slotted the holes to make the thermostat sit straight on the stand. But it is pretty expensive around the £30 mark. Now there are lots of much cheaper stands on the market made by different companies. Now this one was under £10. It's not quite as shiny or heavy as the Chrome Hive stand, but it does do exactly the same job. And I'd be more than happy to recommend one of these to my customers. You do have to put the stand together, but it did come with one extra screw just in case you lose one and some nice clear instructions. And this stand also has the rubber feet on the bottom. If you do decide to get a stand, make sure it is for the mini thermostat because they also make a stand for the larger thermostat, which of course doesn't fit this mini thermostat. Now I'm going to show you several different ways that you can wire these receiver units up. Now it is pretty straightforward, but I know it can be very confusing. So here I just have some three core flex. I've got a live, I've got a neutral, and I've also got an earth. Now we take that power from the central heating system. So if you've got a combi boiler, you'd wire it into the switch view spur or into the boiler itself. And if you've got a traditional system, you most likely take that power from the wiring center. Now for demonstrating this to you, I've just wired this into a three pin plug. Now, before we fit the receiver unit to its back plate, we need to cut a little bit of this plastic away so the wire can fit down flush and then it sort of gets clamped by the receiver box just there. So we need to just cut this away. Now you can either use a pair of snips or a little junior hacksaw, but do be careful because sometimes it'll crack that plastic if you use snips. Now on this occasion, I'm just gonna use my snips and make a couple little cuts and carefully cut through that plastic. Once that's done, I can just tuck the wire into there. So it's quite tight, so it sort of grips that wire nicely. Also, when you cut these wires, don't cut them too long because we don't want the wires hanging out of the bottom. Now, I've just turned the power on. I just want to demonstrate that we don't need the switch wires to make this unit work. You can see this power on there and the unit is now ready to be paired with the other units. Now, here's a very common way of wiring in our switch wires. We have our live neutral and earth coming in there. And then we've got another three core flex here, bringing in the switch wires. So we've got a switch live coming in on number one. And then we've got a switch live coming out on number three terminal. And of course, we've still got our earth wire linked onto the earth terminal just there. Now you should always use the earth wires because the earth wire is there to protect the flex. So if in case you damage the flex at all, the flex is then protected by the earth wire. You'll also need to cut a little bit more of the plastic away so you can fit both the wires in. Another method to wire this in is to use a link from our live. So we take a link around from the live terminal onto number one terminal. And then what I've done here is I've just linked the live and neutral wires together to form one wire. And then that becomes a switch live wire. And of course, I've still got my earth wire to protect the flex. Now I could just use a brown wire and cut the blue wire off with a pair of snips. I just want to jump in here and quickly introduce myself. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 30 years. And I make help videos to help you with your gas boiler and your central heating. If you find this video useful, then please give me a bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find this video. You can click on the subscribe, ring on the bell to get a notification and share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who has bought me a cup of coffee and left a small donation in my toolbox fund. It is really appreciated and it does really help me to make more videos, which I hopefully help you. So this is another method which I come across quite a lot. It's not one which I use because it's not a correct way to do it. So we've got a three core flats coming in. We've got a live and a neutral. There's a link from live to one. And then the earth wire is being used as a switch wire. But of course, that means that the flex is no longer protected by the earth wire and the earth wire is incorrectly being used. So this is a demonstration how not to do it. Now this is a method which I most commonly use and that's to use a five core flex. So we've got five wires coming in. We've got a live, we've got a neutral and we've got the earth. And then obviously we've got two more wires for the switch. That's power coming in and switch live going out. And of course this method is nice and neat and tidy and works on all systems. Now, just a quick note, when you're finished wiring up, give all the wires a good tug because sometimes they're not fully clamped down. And when you give the wires a little tiny pull, they can come out. And obviously that's dangerous. So always just double check that everything is nice and tight and the wires are fully clamped down. 
After you finish wiring it up, do up the two screws on the bottom of the receiver unit. You don't need to do these really tight, you're just nipping them up so they're no longer loose. So now I'm ready to pair the thermostat to the receiver unit. So I've now turned on the power to the receiver unit and the light in the top here is flashing amber. So we got two flashes and then we got it off for one second and then another two flashes and then off again. And obviously that just keeps repeating. Now we can do a quick test and make sure that the unit is wired in properly by pressing the button just here. If you just press it once that the green light comes on and that should then bring the boiler on. If we press it again, that should turn the boiler off and the light will stay flashing for several seconds before it goes out. So let's take the room thermostat and power that on now. So I just remove the backing plate like that and then I can remove the little tag and then the unit will then power up. Now it takes a couple of seconds to initiate and then there we are, Hive has come up in the display and then it comes up with Welcome to Hive. Then a little bit of technical information about the unit before it starts searching for the receiver unit. And there we go, it's now come up with searching. Now it's going to keep on searching and it's not going to find this receiver unit because I've not put the receiver unit into binding mode yet. It's still flashing amber. And I need to change that flashing amber to a sort of purpley white color. Right, so let's do that now. So that's pretty straightforward. We just press and we just hold the button on the receiving it for 10 seconds. So we push that down and we count to 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then you can see it's going to change to a different type of flash. So it's now flashing one second on and one second off. And the light is like a purpley white color. You can see the thermostat is still searching and hopefully any second it's gonna pair with the receiver unit. As soon as the light goes green, it's then paired. And it's gonna do that any second. Let's press that button, keep it lit up. And there we are, look, pairing. And now it's pairing to the receiver unit. And then I'll get a tick on the screen and it says pairing successful. And now the thermostat is all ready to use. No hub, no Wi-Fi setup, no smartphone. It's now just gonna work as a basic thermostat. And turn your central heating on and off when it reaches the desired temperature. Now here's what to do if the thermostat is not pairing to the receiver unit. Now you can see that the receiver unit is in binding mode and that's flashing like a purpley color. And if I touch the button on the front of the thermostat, you'll see that it has been trying to pair for six minutes and 40 seconds. So now what I need to do is to reset the thermostat back to its factory settings. So I press the down arrow and the middle button and the display says factory resets in and the display is counting down. You get to zero, the display changes, says hive. You can then release the two buttons and now the thermostat is reset to its factory settings. And you can see it's going through the startup process and it's gonna start searching for the receiver unit. Now on this occasion, the thermostat found the receiver within 24 seconds. But sometimes I have found that it's taken several minutes before it has found the receiver unit. So then go jumping into this reset process too soon. I'm not sure how long you should wait. You could try starting the process all over again. So you turn off the receiving it, take a battery out of the thermostat and start the process all over again. But going back to my thermostat, you can see 24 seconds, it's now started pairing. The light on the receiving unit has turned to a solid green. And any second, the screen is gonna change and say pairing successful. And now the two units are paired together. And the screen changes a couple more times before it finally goes out. And that's it, so the factory reset worked fine. And now the two units are happily talking to each other. Operating the thermostat is pretty straightforward. We just touch the button in the middle. It tells us the room temperature now, and it also says that the heating is off. Now, if I wanna put the heating on or put the temperature of the room up, I just press the up arrow like this, or just touch it like I'm doing here. And I'm gonna take this up to say 25 degrees because the temperature in my office is quite warm. There we go, 24, 25, and that says target temperature, 25 degrees. And then the display changes and it says target set to 25 degrees and it's in manual mode. 
and then you'll hear a click on the receiver unit and the light will come on next to the flame indicating that the receiver unit has switched the boiler on and the thermostat reverts back to the actual temperature of the room and then it tells us the temperature that it's heating the room up to and then the screen will go off. If we want to turn the heating off or put the temperature down again we can touch that middle button and then we can just press the down arrow and adjust the temperature down to where we want it say 15 degrees like that and then in just a second or two the green light on the relay unit will start flashing to show that it's about to turn off and in a second or two it'll stop flashing and go out turning the heating off meanwhile on the display is changed to show us the actual temperature and the target temperature and then the screen turns itself off and there we go that's how simple this is to use now whilst the display is lit up if you touch the middle button again it'll take you to this menu here where it says choose mode you can use the up and down arrows to scroll through the options the back arrow will just take us back to the other screen off will turn the heating off and schedule will run a default schedule now there does seem to be a built-in times and temperature schedule but i haven't found any way of accessing that apart from the app on the smartphone now if you found a way of adjusting that schedule without using your smartphone then please let us all know and leave a message in the comments and of course manual is where you want to leave it and then you can adjust your temperatures up and down as you want I'll just demonstrate that off mode to you so if we press the middle button the display lights up press it again to choose your mode I'm going to scroll down to off and then touch the middle button again and then the display says heating off frost protection now it doesn't show you a set temperature here but that frost protection is at seven degrees so if the house falls below seven degrees it'll bring the heating on to warm your pipes up and stop things from freezing you can see the relay box is flashing and in a second it will go out turning the heating off and then finally take it out of frost protection press the middle button press it again scroll up to manual like that and then press the button again in the middle to select that manual mode and there we go it's ready now for me to just adjust the temperature up and down as i want and that's it pretty straightforward right that's about it then so i do hope my video has been helpful to you if you want to watch the video on how to install it in a combination boiler click on a link just there and how to install it in a traditional system click the link just there you can give me a thumbs up share it with your friends ring on the bell subscribe there's always my toolbox fund bye for now See you next time.